welcome to another painting video. In this video, I'll be painting a unit of Taraxi sterilizers for my Atmec army. This video combines elements from my Skatari Rangers video and Cathaphon Breachers. But I did find these excellent flight stand proxies which I'll also be painting. I put a link in the description if you're also interested in these flight stands. Let's begin, shall we? I didn't attach the models to the flight stands. Instead, I pinned them on a piece of cork. I drilled a hole in one of the exhausts, which will later be used to pin the model to the flight stand. The flight stands were attached to the base. I primed both the flight stands and the models with black primer from Vallejo. I then left the flight stands as is, and I sprayed Usapti bone on the models themselves. With a Zenithal, I spray Wraith Bone on the models. This will give me a nice light base coat. This to make sure the aluminum metal color is as bright as possible. And now we're ready for painting. I first shade the entire model with Non Oil. You can also focus on the areas you want metal, but I found it to be a lot faster if you just do the entire model. <laughs> Everything I want bronze, I base coat using Screaming Bell. This paint has great coverage and looks really nice on the metal. I highlight the bronze with Psychorax Bronze. It's not the best paint because it has terrible application, but it does look really good with the Screaming Bell. I shade the entire model with Targor Ray Shade. This gives a nice grimy sheen to the metal and shades the bronze very nicely. I end with a dry brush slash highlight of Rune Fang Steel on the entire model. I've painted quite a bit of Atmac models in these last two months and I gotta say this method is very quick. The models can be quite daunting as there is a lot of details. But I think I found a way to easily paint them and make them look good. If I say so myself. These models wear body suits that I base coat with ashen grey. While painting I notice that these poor guys have extra limbs attached to their back which also have bodysuit sleeves. I just love the body horror on these models. I shave the bodysuit with Non Oil. The new Non Oil doesn't stain that much, which is great for shading these types of things. Next, I add two highlights. The first highlight is Mechanicus Standard Grey. And the second highlight is Dawnstone. With parts like these, I don't highlight every single fold. I focus mainly on the parts that are visible. This is a great time saver. Folds hidden underneath will never be noticed anyway if the model is on the tabletop. The body armor is base coated with corn red. I needed two coats to get a nice even layer of paint. I shade the armor with Kerberg Crimson. Then I stipple on a couple of layers. The first layer is with Sanguine Scarlet from Two Thin Coats. I focus these layers on the upper parts of the armor. The second layer is Evil Sun Scarlet. This is a little bit brighter but works really well with the previous layer. The final layer which acts as a highlight is Wild Rider Red. I keep stippling to create some texture on the armor. The stippling technique isn't super visible on these models. I use the same technique on my Breachers and Dune Crawler, and that looks a lot better. But I do think this still adds to the model even though it is a very subtle effect. The following step is a little bit time consuming. I base coat the wing membranes with Xandri Dust. 
Now, the model was USAP T-Bone in the preparation phase, but trust me as I say that this method works a lot faster than picking out all the parts that you want metal. I layer on USAP T-Bone. I keep the previous layer showing in the recesses. This is a great hard edge, but in the weathering step I'll change this a little bit. The final layer is Screaming Skull. I paint parallel to the membranes, which creates some painting stripes on the membranes themselves. I personally like this look, as it does give the impression that the wings can fold in and out. The areas of the wings are pretty big, and they might look a bit boring at the moment, but in the weathering step we'll add some more texture. I didn't add any decals to the wings, as I thought that looked a little bit silly. The wings should be able to fold in and out, so it's weird that all the wings have the exact same decals on them. It doesn't really make sense to me. Let's add some small details. I paint all the leather straps with Rhinox hide. I also paint the rope, which is part of the wing. I highlight with Gorthor Brown. And highlight again with Baneblade Brown. All the tubes are painted using Black Legion. Some tubes I'll repaint after weathering because I want to add some fluorescent effects to them. I highlight the black tubes with Dawnstone. For weathering I add streaking grime to the entire model. This is the reason I painted this model very light because we're darkening the model with this enamel wash. With a sponge and some white spirit, I now remove the streaking grime. I only want streaking grime left in the recesses. Once your sponge gets nice and dirty, you can use it to add some splotches of grime on areas where you want. Like the wings. Just play around with this a little bit. It can add a lot to the model. With a black enamel wash, I shade the muzzle of the phosphor torch to indicate this has been used many times. You can also do this with an acrylic shade, but enamel gives you a little bit of control by adding some white spirit. After giving the streaking grime enough time to dry, I paint everything I want to light up with model color white from Vallejo. This paint covers really well. Everything I want to glow blue, I paint with Frost Heart Contrast Paint. Everything I want to glow green, I paint with Striking Scorpion Green. Nice and simple. On to the flight stands. While they are already black, I still cover them with a Abaddon Black. This will work a lot better if I want to do some corrections later on. I dry brush the flight stand with model color white, focusing on the top parts where the exhaust flames will be. I paint the top part of the exhaust flames with flash kits yellow. I water it down just a little bit and I add two coats. Because of the white dry brush the yellow really pops. I repeat the last step with Troll Slayer Orange. I slightly water it down and paint the middle part of the exhaust. I also cover the yellow a little bit and stip a little bit of orange on the yellow to create a transition. With Evil Sun Scarlet I add red to the fire exhaust. I again add it slightly watered down and I stip a transition between the red and orange. I also add a little bit of red on the bottom to simulate glowing embers left behind in the dark smoke. With Dorn Yellow, I highlight the yellow a little bit more to make the transition to white just a bit easier. Only on the tips of the exhaust I paint Monocolor White, indicating the flame is the hottest there. With the Baton Black I fix some of my mistakes and I darken some of the smoke blobs at the bottom. And we're done! Here we have a unit of jump packing cyborgs ready to fry anyone who tries to get too close to an objective. They can deep strike so it's actually just perfect to just drop them on an objective somewhere. 
I'm really happy with these flight sands as well, as I really don't like the transparent ones that come in the box. In my next video, I'm going to paint a Chaos Knight War Dog for my World Eaters army, and I'm going to do some reposing because I have a fun idea to tell a little story with this model. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram, where I'll post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.